Welcome to our severance bonus episode where we are going to be covering the Lexington letter. I am joined by Coach Dave and Jules. How are we doing? Doing well. Doing all right. Me too. I'm very excited to be talking about severance again. I know a couple of you guys have asked for more content on this from our last episode. So if you don't know anything about the Lexington letter, it opens up a whole can of worms that you can really, really get into stuff and like lure on the show. Uh, so if you guys want to see more videos on this, you know, we're barely going to scratch the surface. So let us know and we'll, we'll keep covering it until we covered it all because there's just so much to get into. So this came to our attention from Kizenbell. Uh, you're the best, Kizenbell. And she said at the end of one of her comments, did you guys see there is a little Apple book that goes along with the show? I heard about it from somewhere else and downloaded it. It's free and not super long or anything. It's called the Lex the Lexington Letters and has a copy of some of the stuff from the Lumen Handbook and it has an email from a separate employee basically on the run. Wasn't sure if you guys heard about it yet or not because I only found out about it from other YouTube videos. Now that was the first time I ever heard about it when I saw that comment. So that's why I uh, love when you guys comment. I'm always learning new things. And then I asked Jules and Coach if they heard of anything about it and it seemed like none of us really did but as soon as we looked into it we wanted to know more. So Dave, how about you give just like a general, if if this is someone's first time hearing it, like what the Lexington letter, what's the point of it, like what it is? Um, so the Lexington letter is supplemental media. Um, a number of TV shows have done this in the past. Uh, Lost was kind of notorious for it, for having either hidden websites or, or stuff that would kind of send you down the rabbit hole. There was even some viral marketing for like The Dark Knight with the appearance of the Joker and uh, another, you know, supplemental, just whether it's readings or videos or stuff like that. The one guy, uh, Richard Kelly, who did Donnie Darko, did a huge batch of like songs and videos for his follow up flop uh, Southland Tales. Mm. But for Severance, the Lexington letter is just some things. It kind of ties some things together. It illuminates a couple things. And it's just something that makes the story of Severance just a little tighter as well as more as more mysterious at the same time yeah that's well put i agree um, yeah i would definitely agree with that yeah we're basically you're just going to get right into it see what theories we can get out of it and like i said if you guys want to know more about this we will definitely cover it just let us know and comment your theories we'll read them on the next time we come on and what do you guys think is like this is nuts so all right jules let's get into it what we got okay so the Lexington letter starts off with an email from a reporter at the Topeka Star. Her name is Daria Thorne, and she is emailing her boss, whose name is Jim Milchick. <laughs> there, you <laughs> there you go. There you go. Mr. Milchick. <laughs> So that's, right off that, the bat, this seems sketchy. Right yeah. off the bat. <laughs> that's the first sign right there. Like, is he his brother? Is he his dad? It's just like, oh, like, it, real quick, before we get into it, when we get season two, because they announced season two already, would you guys want to see these scenes played out or keep it like how it is, just off to the side? Off to the side. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like I, I, well, I don't know. Jules, what do you think? Well, I think it would be interesting for them to reference it for sure, but I wouldn't want this to be like the center of plot point. You know what I would love? I would love, I agree with not the center plot point because the way they run the show is perfect, but say it was sort of a bonus episode where they just focused on this and showed us a bunch of stuff from the Lexington letter, like maybe to kick off the season and then they got into it, into, into the meat of what season two yeah, is all about. Cool. Yeah, I think it'd be sweet. I think just if they mention it alone, if if like one of the uh, higher ups mentions, oh, that thing from Lexington or, yes, yeah. you know, or they, they talk about, you know, Peggy being one of the first to break free or the, you know, the problem that Peggy was or something like that. I think just a, a slight reference would be enough. I don't yeah, think that we need to. to it. Yeah, I don't think we, we don't need to cast Peggy. Um. But, you know, either way, I think would be great for the show. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, 
it's it's a great supplemental material, but I think in itself it's pretty straightforward. A little bit of intertwining it in there would be great, but I don't really think we need much further explanation of it. Well, what do you guys think? Let us know. Oh uh, yeah, here it is. What do we got? This reporter emails her boss and says, "Hey, I just got this email from a former uh, severed employee from Lumen. You know it." seems a little sketchy like let me know what you think so it goes into the letter and you know peg introduces herself and she says you know until yesterday i was a severed employee and now i'm not and now i'm on the run and basically here's my story here's what happened to me and the reason that she reached out to the topeka star is because she's like you know i know you you know lumen has a lot of connections with the authorities and i don't want to you know kind of reach out to them and have it just be snubbed which Ironically, they may still have some connections because, you know, the Topeka Star and Milchik, you know, there's, <laughs> I have a feeling that that's a reason why this letter didn't get out to many people. Yeah. So she's on top of that, she says that, you know, she reached out because they covered the Dorner truck incident, which will come into play later in the letter. Okay. So basically Peg's background is that she was, you know, a bus driver and she's kind of getting, you know, fed up with her job. She ends up getting in a bus accident, familiar. And then she hears this, this ad on the radio for Lumen and this whole severed program. And she goes, wow, that sounds really great. I'm tired of my job. You know, I wouldn't have to work another day in my life. Let's check it out. I'll tell you what, I, I would totally think about getting severed for that reason alone. That'd be so dope. Yeah, I can definitely <laughs> see the appeal there, but sure, yeah. Um, I don't know. I would feel weird about not being in the know about what I'm doing half of my life. Yeah. I mean, like even in the show when, you know, Mark goes home with a bandaid on his head and he's just given a gift card. Like, are you really okay with that? Like, do you believe what they yeah, say like, happened? Yeah. Exactly. That's what it's just, I was just going to say. Like, how do you yeah. know that they're telling you the truth? Do not cross current boxes and motors slipped on an overhead projector slide and sustained a minor blow to the temple. Which they were, um, so yeah. Of course not. We find out that they are not telling the truth about most things. The work-life balance. To start, imagine yourself as a seesaw. Ow! Fuck! The morality of mortality would really freak me out. Of the idea that, like, at some point, one or the other is going to die, and the other one is going to exist. It's very you know, Schrodinger. You know, yes. Schrodinger's cat. And that's what I think of every time I think of this. Because it's like both of these people both exist and don't exist simultaneously. It just kind of depends on where they're at. It's interesting because the, I've noticed that all the characters, including Peg in this letter, come to kind of see that they're any as like, yeah, that's me, but it's a separate person, basically. And they end up, you know, feeling bad for what they're putting this person through, even though it's them. You know what I mean? It's just a weird it, feeling. I don't except know if I'd for once. To that my brain. Except for our, our lead character who threatens herself. Which, <laughs> I mean, we, we now know why. Um, we now know why. That, that is very evil. <laughs> the letter goes on to talk about just what Peg's experience is like going through the first part of the program. And then one day she gets done at work and finds a note in her pocket. And this note isn't it's not words, it's just symbols. But after looking at it for a minute, she realizes that this is a made up language that she and her sister had created in like the third grade or something. So her any self wrote her this note and was basically like, hey, what the hell's going on here? Like what, what is outside world? Like, why am I in here? What did you, why did you do this? And they form this kind of you know relationship with each other. And then she ends up finding out that things that are happening inside Lumen not so great. So they almost use like a twin speak type of thing and would possibly led to the Titan security or whatever they're using now mm -hmm. that picks up shapes and, and, and notes. And I guess even the writing on arms that uh, a couple of our characters did. So yeah, I do think it's funny that they kind of mentioned that maybe more than once about how, you know, it's not just words. They pick up symbols too. Like, don't even try it. You've got to let the info smuggling notion go. Okay, but how good are the scanners? Like, what if you wrote the letters funky, like one of those robot tests? You can make an attempt, but you're going to get caught. So, so I have no doubt that this is what led to that. This makes me think, though, what's more likely that, you know, this this was definitely in the past, but what's more likely that this made them fix their security and get it ultra to, you know, you can't get anything past them, or that there's still something you could get past those scanners? What's more likely? I would say it's probably more likely that 
this whole peg incident is the reason that they tightened the security. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a chance that someone's going to figure out a way to get something past those sensors. Because if mm. they could do it once, I'm sure there's a way they could find a loophole again. But I would say, yes, for sure, it's more likely that PEG is the reason why they have, you know, tightened up so hard on security. Because, I mean, without that, you know, people would be quitting left and right. right. Everyone would find out how shitty it is down there. And they'd be like, nah, see ya. Well, except, except Telly, but. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I think it'd be cool to see a scene like, you know, they mentioned, oh, ever since Peggy, you know, we that doesn't get through anymore. Right. Like something small like that, that only like, people that know about this. don't need another Peggy incident. You know? Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, it'd be cool. So Peggy and her any self, you know, it's funny. She says, she mentions that her any called her Peggy when she normally goes by Peg. And she's like, you know, no one's called me Peggy since I was a kid. And it brings me back to something she had said earlier in the letter when she mentions that when she first started this program, Lumen basically said, your innie is going to be like a child. And the more I think about that, the more I realize, like, oh, my God, they really do treat them like kids. Like, the, the prize reward systems, you know, how, how simple their job is in itself. You know, the first thing they do when they get there is, you know, learn to sort things by emotion. And what do kids learn when they're, when they're babies? They learn it, how, to, how to identify and, and control their emotion. So, uh, cat one numbers, for example feel a certain way on sight. They'll be sort of disconcerting, scary. Scary. And yeah. even the archetypes of the, each of these characters, I mean, the one guy is the kind of the tattletale. I do think the old photos are supposed to stay on the desk until the new ones come in. The other guy is the know-it-all bravado. And, you know, it, it seems like our main character, played by Adam Scott, is very kind of like, okay, everybody relax, 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 kind. The infantilism of all these and the way that they act about this stuff is very kind of like kids feeling out their way. It kind of makes me think about, you know, what exactly they may be doing with, you know, not only this data that they're sorting, but with these, these innies in, like as a whole. You know, it kind of seems like they're figuring out a way to kind of create these innies from scratch and yeah. kind of develop them into what they need them to be developed into, you know, so they're, they're right. formulating a way to raise, so to speak, these people, it's to the workers that they need. Going off of that, it's one of my main, you know, pie in the sky theories is what they're kind of doing on the job is finding a way to bring Keir Egan back to life. So... <laughs> Which it's is a brilliant of, theory, by the way. It's kind of out there, but it, it does kind of make sense because the way they tr they treat him like a god, you know, oh, yeah. the, the statue, the his house, like it, it's it's really strange how much they look up to him and the way the, that that Helly's father speaks of him, almost mm -hmm. almost like he was scared, like oh he would be so grateful for what you're doing. Thank you so much. They, like yeah, they yeah. It's like he's their cult leader. I don't right. know why we end up doing shows about cults all the time, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense to me. So and, you know, they keep, they keep talking about how their, their work is going to be life-changing or whatever. So they're uh, attempting that transcendence, like that bad Johnny Depp movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's basically that's, like that's they're, we're, we're trying to transcend into like an elderly, into a healthy body. Right. Now, into possibly a baby body. And that's why they have to do all these baby things. Maybe. Maybe. So does that bring us to Mrs. Casey? Miss Casey, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. or Miss Casey, sorry, where it's, you know, she was in a car accident, which seems to She's happen a lot. A missus, but, you know. <laughs> it seems to happen a lot. She's dead in the eyes of her husband and his family, but as we find out, is alive within Lumen. But only right. for, what was it, 107 hours, right? 107, right. My life has been 107 hours long. All right, this is this is another what's more likely. So first off, Tanya Brooks, thanks for pointing out, the last time we saw Miss Casey, she's going to the testing floor, not the break room. And right. uh, that's also yeah. the painting that Irving is doing, uh, the hallway and elevator to the testing floor. But another what's more likely, is it more likely that that crash actually happened and she's brain dead or she's like a clone? Like, did right. they fake it? Did they fake it and, and bring her in or, or maybe like, she's fine. Maybe when she's you totally say, fine. when you say like they faked it, do you mean like she voluntarily did this? Yeah. Yeah. 
Like See, that's a tough would, one. Yeah. Well, she tough. she was a professor at the play at the university. We saw the other girl who seemed to know a lot about what was going on at the university. Like the Lumen stuff could have been started out of the university. So yeah. she could have been involved at some point. That's true. Maybe she was part of like the like the ground floor project. Yeah, um, and maybe maybe it went wrong. And they wiped her, and that's why she's only been awake for 107 hours now, maybe. And now they won't yeah. let her leave. Or maybe it was one of those things where she was so invested in this. She goes, you know what? You need someone to test it? Test it on me. Right. The True. weird part yeah. is she's in control of her body. That's that's the thing that's like, it's very hard for me to wrap my brain around because I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, well, she's in a coma. But then she can walk and talk here but then maybe half her brain's in the catatonic state i have no idea it's yeah, it's a little say, bit like, of one of those mind crossing things if they can surgically split your memories i'm sure they can figure out a way to surgically split your motor functions right fair. that's fair yeah but since i'm hearing it you guys talk about this i'm going with she's in on it and i'll stick with jules theory that she was like i'm all in tested on me so i'm going with that that's just to make a prediction. I think that'd be sick. That'd be really it's cool. Definitely, she's in any because of the way she acts. It is there. There is a childlike innocence to her too that is just following yeah. orders. But yeah, but hers is like a creepy robotic kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, and now with Mark's, you know, proclamation to his sister of. Damn it! Please. We're prisoners. right before he was out he woke back up you know obviously his sister's going to tell him what he said but then what like then he's going to have to yeah, try to find out how to talk to him on the inside how does he get that information how do they relay that information and then obviously right. w- when he's back as an any he's going to know who she is is he going to try to wake her up is he going to try to get her to right. try to remember anything it's going to be really interesting yeah. to see how they communicate see one thing i just thought of is that i'm wondering if maybe I don't know. I'm starting to think that they definitely did wipe her Audi side of her from her brain somehow because like all the other 80s have these like instinctive things still. Like they yeah. know what basic things are from the outside world. Like they still have these in, like basic in- instincts on like how to identify emotions and things like that. But like because of how robotic she is and how like she just she seems like she doesn't know anything from from her previous years of life. Do you get what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Right. Yeah. And she, yeah, she even says that the day she had a monitor heli was the best day of her life because it was the longest she was awake right. for eight, eight hours. I mean, yeah, she's totally, she's a total clean slate. So really, really interesting stuff. Like she, she's supposedly dead on the outside, on the inside, she's like getting tested on. She's only awake and then gets put right back to sleep. Like that's a wild existence. Wild. So really interesting yeah. what they're going to do with her next year. So. Yeah, so so now now that we've gone down that rabbit hole, uh, <laughs> Ms. Casey's accident is not the only one that we learned about. Um, so in this letter, Peggy tells Peg that she finally completed this file. And somehow Peg figures out that at the same time, minutes after she completes this file, there is an attack on... Dornan, Dor- Dorner. I'm gonna try that one again. Dorner, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, right after uh, Peggy completes this file, like minutes after, uh, there is a an attack on a Dorner truck, which is a competitor of Lumen Industries. So, okay. yeah. Peg is like, wait a second, there has to be some kind of connection with that. So, I'm yeah. curious as to what you guys think about that. I mean, the first thing comes to my head is like, okay, so maybe that's what they're doing. They're causing things to happen in the outside world. uh, And that's why they have to be severed. So they can't possibly put the connections together of like time and place type of thing. But yeah, I mean, that's the first thing that comes to my my mind. What about you, coach? Um, Yeah, it's one of those that's that's just, gosh, it just seems a little bit (laughs) deeper than my brain's willing to go so far. Yeah. Um, yeah i'm i'm honestly i'm a little bit at a loss for words for this one i just don't know yeah i mean that's what this show does dude that's why it's so cool 
there and that's why having something like the lexton letter makes it even cooler because you get to look into it and think and it, it's a shame if people are fans of the show and don't know about this by now so hopefully we can get more conversation sparked out of this because we could seriously we could go for on and on and on there's so much to get into. yeah there's a lot of like seems come out of like the 60s conspiracy theories of like okay you have a possible manchurian candidate or you know how do you have someone do evil without them knowing or you know even you go back to the old jfk conspiracies a lot of the people that seem to know a lot suddenly all died in car accidents it's like it's a it's a show that is you know kind of based on conspiracy and keeping the audience in the dark so you know it lets your mind wander oh yeah it does what do you think yeah, and jules i mean i i couldn't agree more i couldn't yeah. agree more and i i think the lexington lexington letter just gives you like that much more to think about like it, did you guys go through the handbook at all no no, I, I did a deep dive on some other stuff, but like the handbook, um, it just, it's, it's so weird. And, and as you said before, it's very weird. <laughs> it is. And you know, the, uh, Peggy even said, she's like, you know, this thing looks like it's because at one point Peggy like smuggles this handbook out for herself. Right. And she's like, this looks like it was written for a child. Like the mascot, it, it looks like a, you know, the little paper clip from Microsoft mm -hmm. Word. Um, what was this one? Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. that's what their mascot looks like. Um, and this whole thing just gives you these little like, like things throughout, like the uh, basically their procedures that you're like, hmm, I wonder if that has some kind of connection. Like one thing that I noticed right. was there is a set of coordinates at the bottom of their files, and it says that these numbers show your rel relative location in the data field. But I'm wondering. If we were to look at the coordinates of that Lexi Lexington file, if those would match the coordinates of when that that truck was bombed. Hmm. Interesting. And and further, this is I've been waiting to talk to you, to you guys about this. So the other thing that I noticed in this handbook that I have to point out before I forget, because I know I will, uh, is one of the nine core principles. So the last principle on this list is Wiles, W-I-L-E-S, Wiles. Do you guys know what the dictionary definition of that is? Oh, no. No, That's, oh, no. <laughs> how, how did you think to look that up? Did you just want so, to? Well, I, was I was just looking at them because a lot of them seemed like they had kind of the same definition. And I'm like, I'm not really sure I know what they mean in this context. Yeah. But just for shits and gigs, I looked it up. Hell yeah. Uh, and <laughs> so... It means to, as a noun, it means devious or cunning stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. Or as a verb, it means basically to lure or entice someone. Oh. So the fact that that is one of their nine core principles that they want instilled in everybody that's part of their group seems a little suspicious to me. Wow. Yeah. And remember what Helly's father said, we're like, everyone will have Kier or something like that like everyone will be sons of Kier right and like that's like wow yeah crazy man such a cult they want the whole world to be a cult they want the whole world to be lumen employees yes, yes. and yeah. it's terrifying <laughs> one of the big connections that i got out of the lexington letter and for what i saw in severance was the breathing tube and miss cobell so like when she comes back and absolutely trashes her apartment and she, you see the shrine that she's about to tear into, you can see a breathing tube right underneath the candle or what looks like a breathing tube. And I believe there's even another one where she's uh, prone on a bed and, and she has it in her arms and she's almost clutching it. And they talk about in the Lexington letter how they had these defective breathing tubes. And this could be the whole reason why Miss Cobell is so much different and willing to lay, let things happen and kind of testing. She could be kind of a, a mole trying to either take down or discover from the inside out, um, which yeah. sets up a whole new round of questions as you have a conspiracy, a mole, and then the children waking up. You know what? Yeah. In the... Go ahead. No, go ahead, Jim. The 
the mole thing kind of makes her actions in the finale make more sense because think about it if she was a mole and she needed to stay in there to accomplish her goal that rhyme didn't mean it to but if she had to stay in there then when she saw a chance to get her job back she'd obviously have to jump on that immediately right and because people are like how'd she go from destroying her house to taking the job back right away and that could make more sense because like because she needs to be in there to take it down so be cool yeah that's honestly that's basically exactly what i was going to say like okay dave once you pointed that out it, it it made sense in my brain like maybe she's just playing the long game here like somehow Ruben yeah. did her dirty or you know maybe she had some connection to someone who was badly affected by this procedure and now she's like you know what like i'm i need to be there i need to find out exactly what they're doing so i can take them down for good yeah that's definitely it <laughs> that's definitely it i think we it feels like it has to be yeah it feels like it has to be but right, yeah, well done, and, and well it's done. too good of an actress and Patricia Arquette, you know, where, oh, you know, she's just absolutely killing it. So, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to pivot on, you know, newer actors and actresses, you know, uh, classically trained experienced ones, which they're surprising a lot in this. I mean, I mean, Christopher Walken pulls forth the serious role that I didn't think he had in him. Yeah, very well done. I loved uh, Torturo too, man. He's, he's oh, great. Killing he's it. So good. So good. All right. Was there anybody you guys didn't like? No. <laughs> it's so I, good. I like the I, character I of the brother in law, but he's just a. Oh, he's the ass. worst. <laughs> He's there might be something I've up with that some, guy too. I was going to say, yeah. I've, I've seen some, some strange theories about him too. So. You know, if that's something you guys want us to touch on, definitely let us know because there's a lot of interesting stuff yeah. when it comes to him. Yeah, we'll, we will save him for next week so or whenever we do this again, if you guys want it. So get your questions in on him because he kind of has a cult too. You know, he kind of does. Yeah. That woman changed her name for him and then she's going to change it again. Okay, or come sh- on, that book. That book. Yeah, yeah, come on. What's up with that? All right. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so the only last really important thing that we need to know from this letter is that eventually Peg was caught. Um, so they caught one of her incoming letters uh, and her any basically wrote back to her like, good luck, you need to get the hell out of here. So she went on the run and then we find out uh, that she was killed. Guess how? Yeah. In a car accident. <laughs> That's their thing. That's their thing in a car accident and i know we had mentioned before like uh, i wonder if they used the uh overtime switch for that somehow um you know maybe they flipped it back on while she was driving and she was like what the hell am i doing and crashed her car and then they're like Mm. well no trade no way to trace that back to us or you know they got their hands in all these pots they they pulled the miss casey thing again you know yeah and that very well could be for sure. And what if what if all of a sudden we there's a mysterious character in the backgrounds and we meet her and it's Peg? That'd be nuts. That'd be so cool. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> right? It'd be so cool. So yeah, this that is great. That would be amazing. This is great. It, it just opens up so many different forms of so many paths we could walk down and just go at it. It's 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 awesome. So if you love the show like we do, get your questions in. We will cover this again. We'll cover it as many times as you guys want because literally we just scratch the surface. There's so many different things we could talk about and dedicate an entire YouTube episode on. So we would love to do it again. Just let us know. But uh, that's it for now. So thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time. Remember your Audi likes to like and subscribe. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Thanks.